Good morning. I always figure that I should try to think things out, and I just want you to double check my volume for me. I gotta get both chat rooms up. That way I don't miss the message. It just like happened to me um, a couple of days back. And remember, uh, oh yeah, you folks are unbelievably cool. 1,560 comments. 1,560 comments on the last live stream. The one that I was talking away to myself. Um, that's amazing. Don't do that again, okay? Because that was brutal. I loved every minute of reading it, but that was unbelievable. <laughs> now, the problem with that was I couldn't actually get all the comments inside my chat room. So there's... Don't get me started. Don't get me started. I figured, come on early, say hi to everybody. Uh, I should do that. I want to say hi to everybody. Come on a couple of minutes early. So if you're joining the video right now, and there's comment sections to your left, that means we're actually live. And the comments are below. That means it has went through the process and re-rendered and popped itself back up after we done a live stream. And two nights ago, or three nights, I can't even remember. I haven't stopped all day. You have no idea. Um, but I figured, you know, if I'm coming on anyway, um, and wanted to spend a couple of minutes to say to hi to everybody right away without getting off the track, what I could probably do was come on early if people are there early and say hi to them, say. I got to learn to do stuff like that. Sounds good. Good stuff, loud and clear. And I got both comment sections up there, so hopefully that'll never happen. If it happens again, I'm going to spend just hours and hours and hours and hours and hours with my computer and pictures and audios and videos, and I'm going to pump them out there with the remix button on it. See how they like that. They're better off leaving us alone so we can stream and have our chat. What's wrong, you know? Trying to shut us down? That's not going to work. You folks have already made up your mind, same as me. Uh, the comfort climate. Hey, says Dana by the numbers was epic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I, I'm going to finish that video off tonight because I, I was so pissed off. I was raging at that point when I stopped the video. And I still got a huge list of these numbers. I didn't have the heart to sit there and do it. I just didn't have the heart. It took the, it took the good out of me and I went and laid down past out. I woke up like an hour later and I think I turned on, yeah, I turned on the remix button and went back, crashed again. And it just took, took the daily thread out of me because those numbers are something unbelievable. Um, just passing care, Jimmy Lunar, hi. No, no GMOs, global march against chemtrails. Yeah, <laughs> you don't want to march against chemtrails. That's why we're making this video tonight. How crazy is it to say those words? Um, but we're good. we'll get to that. Let me say hi to everybody. Ketzer K, hi. Lunar, GMO, uh, no, no GMO. Just passing through, Sean, uh, Sylvia. I just distracted myself that time. Char, I got gotcha. you. Uh, oh, Matus, and who else was it there? Mickey, hi, Mickey. Thank you, Mickey, by the way. I've seen your comments, man. Uh, you're, you're a good soul. Uh, hi, Tom. Yeah, low volume. That was my fault when I rendered the video. And uh, Miss Milky uh, ran my video up on her site, Miss Milky Clown 1. You'll see the link below. And she fixed the audio, made it a little bit louder. It's not, sometimes it happens, right? Um, not much I can do about it. You get what you get sometimes. That's just... I don't have a $10,000 TriCaster sitting here. And I might in the near future. Hi, Avigator. Just make sure I get everybody in there. I know there's one more that I never covered. Uh, the Real Knight Writer says, Moret is another gatekeeper. My goodness. Um, I got a link below to her newest video. It's uh, just like two links below. It's called uh, New Lauren Moritz. And she's just done another interview. She's an amazing soul. I've been following her for about eight years. And she's, uh, she's extraordinary. Extraordinary uh, soul. 
And I don't, I don't know, like, just to come in and call somebody a gatekeeper, I'm not sure, what, like, where you could even... Calling someone a name, you gotta, you got to justify that. If you're a night writer, if you're a writer, you know that you can't just come in and slander somebody and not give us some substance that we can go look at ourselves and make up our own minds. Why should I take your word? That's why I do the things I do, is to give you all the angles and let you make up your own mind. You don't give us a single angle, and you assert that Lorraine Moret is a gatekeeper when her information opens the gates to the information, to the people. I mean, go watch her stuff. My goodness. My goodness. I got no idea where you come from. And I don't agree with you, and I don't appreciate it, because you don't even try to back it up. You don't even try to explain yourself. Just come in, bleh, bleh, puke up, and insult, and run away like a chicken. Anyway, just passing through. Um, let me go back one more. Hang on one second, folks, and then we'll get fired up. And... Uh, Citizen Skywatch couldn't figure out what the countdown timer was, and it's a Fuki you'd up, I meant to say. Fuki, I was trying to make a joke anyway, but it looks bad when I look at it now, so I wasn't trying to be mean or anything. And the video is fine, yeah. Hi, Kurtzer. Now, was there anybody here I didn't get say hi to before I start? Freedom Fighters, hi. I'll just run down. Hi, Dudley. Bob. How you got? 75 of the 99 picture series. That's pretty good code. So 1.64 gigabytes all together. It's an amazing, amazing, amazing collection. Hi, Hadabaski. Elizabeth, hi. Thank you. And the audio is, thank you so much. Uh, I'm always happy, like I said, to see you guys. And um, you guys are all, you know, I zip free. You guys are, the way I see you folks, you're battle-worn now at this stage. You know, you're battle-worn. And you're just, um, you're waiting to do battle. Hi, Tom. Yeah, you can do that, Tom. Yeah, sure. I know how that works. Um, I, I like the audios, too. And unfortunately, this is the best I could do. I miss Frill. Thank you. Just uh, see if I get anybody. Dudley again, Bob. Yeah, okay. Looks like I got everybody. Albert Hoy. Yosele. Junkyard Flyer. Starlight. And Jimmy Joseph. I already said hi, Baba. Hi, Daisy. Three, two, three. And this is an important video tonight, folks. Really, truly important. And it drives me mad that I that I didn't get this done. <coughs> you know, chemtrails, a lot of people can't wrap their mind around. And I had done a video quite a while back. But I wasn't able to connect the dots. And uh, th the radiation connects every dot there is in chemtrails. It connects every single dot. Uh, for instance... Uh, they came trail Vietnam for nine years with just massive amount of planes tip to tip, you know, a couple of hundred yards between them or whatever it was, half a mile. And they covered Vietnam with toxins for nine years, for nine years, day and night. Uh, that was based upon a cloud seeding technology uh, from the 50s and the 45 and that, that where they played around with the weather modifications. But if you look, uh, a long story short would be, if you look at uh, the emergency plan for every country, bar nobody, for radiation follow is to get up in planes and chemtrail because uh, the alphas, the betas, the gammas that are coming through or, or that are creating the radiation uh, this is all electrically charged, and so they aggregate each other, and they knock it down. Because otherwise it goes up into the upper atmospheres at an enormous rate, gets lugged all around the planet, 
and the gig is over for the nuclear departments. And so they needed to control that. But they also had this plan, and it's combined with GMO, is another part of that plan. They enhance each other. And GMO has no nutrients in it. So it makes you very susceptible to low-level radiation, and they don't have a mass die-off and a panic that's noticeable. And they score, you know, they do get areas where that does happen, but they manage just to, they manage to put yourself into a position where everybody ignored it, everybody went to sleep and watched Fox and watched everybody else, not everybody, but most people did. And they, they got lulled into get up and go to work. But also the system kept them on the edge the whole time, on, a, on an edge where everybody's living pay to, paycheck to paycheck and they never got enough food, they never got enough gas, they make sure the insurance and uh, permits and, and stuff like that eats up the average person's extra money. They've always kept minimum wage down to keep minimum wage because the whole country runs on minimum wage whether you realize it or not because the people on minimum wage can't uh, poke their money away. They have to spend it every paycheck. You know, there's a tiny percentage of them if you want to mini me to debt about it, but uh, 99% of the people on minimum wage can't hang on to a nickel. Uh, not only that, they're paid every week. And so th the government knows for sure this much tax dollars is coming into, and that's how they base the whole bloody economy up on uh, the, 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 the people, how many people is actually employed with minimum wage. Because they can guarantee the money from that every Friday afternoon, almost, or by you know by Monday morning. Not all of it, but I'm, I'm sure. Once again, it's up in the high 90s percent of that money is going to be uh, ditched, so to speak, accounted for, and has to go. But the taxes are so important too. Um, like a lot of the big players are only uh, getting paid once a month, and the bigger players are getting paid once a year scenarios. Uh, I know my younger brother, he got a $50,000 SUV and a $50,000 uh, bonus check for Christmas. Uh, must be nice, you know, you get a $50,000, $50, that was a few years back, you get a $50,000 uh, fully decked out leather interior, beautiful, for a Christmas bonus. Like, I don't get, but he's, he's a good person anyway. He's regional district manager for a big scaffolding company for many years now, but I digress. The, the chemtrails, see, that really confused me. Uh, like, you'd look at uh, how a farmer goes out and crop dust his field. That's chemtrailing. You look at how firefighter um, water bombers go out and fight fires. That's chemtrailing. You look at how um, Ben Livingston, uh, who's basically considered to father a weaponized uh, weather because he made it rain over the Ho Chi Minh Trail with cloud seeding for uh, an extended, he kept the mon during the monsoon, he made extended the monsoons by about six weeks to wash out bridges, highways, uh, communities, lives, farms, animals, destroyed lives forever, uh, same as bombs were doing at the same time, same as the chemtrailing was going on all over that country for nine years nonstop. They, they, sprayed the entire country with dioxin, which is a toxin, which is banned right around the entire planet. And they knew back when they started using it how deadly that is. And they're actually, um, I can't remember, just reading the other day, they've, they've been chemtrailing another country for about nine years for to kill the coca plants. Anybody know what country that was, Peru or something? Is my audio still coming out? I'm just, that there's such a... Now, yeah, I see what uh, Daisy's saying, but don't chemtrails use radioactive chemicals? What they're using is something that aggregates with the radiation because there's too much radiation on this planet now because we're firing 5.5 million rounds a month in Iraq, month after month and year after year, and that's recorded. And half of those bullets came out of McAllister's. 
and the three other ones that only make depleted uranium. When Callister it was 20 train car loads a day every day of a DU. And like the Warthog, the A-10 Warthog, that shoots a ton and a half of the 30 millimeters. And the cannon rounds, they're nothing but depleted uranium. And so a ton and a half a minute, that's 70 nuclear weapons. A minute, the animosity equivalent of 70 Nagasaki bombs worth of radiation being released into the ground, into the schools, into the drinking water, into the farms, into all the hills, of course, into all the buildings. And so uh, when you go in there, the children are going in there and the families are going in there after to try to salvage blankets and diapers. All of that is radioactive. Uh, not only is it 71 Nagasaki bombs worth of radiation, and these numbers were worked out by a Japanese physicist at a Hamburg conference on DU, which is commonly known as depleted uranium. It's uranium-238. It's left over from the 99.8 or yeah, 99.8 percent of the of the uranium is thrown away. It's known as uh, because they changed the properties of the beta and the alphas and the gammas. They changed those properties by doing that enrichment. And uh, it's point two, actually, that gets used for nuclear, what they call nuclear power, which is a total fabrication. They never needed to enrich it this much. This was the fabrication that got us where we are. But they've been making weapons out of that stuff and firing it on four different continents. But they also been taking all this, uh, you know, I got the new numbers on Hanford down the road. It's 454 billion gallons dumped into the soil. 454 billion gallons of the sludge, americanium, you know, just so much, just so much mixture that there's fusion going on down there in the ground. You know, it's got nothing to do with the tanks. And the reason those tanks are leaking, leaking at Hanford is because they got all the heavy metals dumped into the tanks. It's a well-known issue. And so they got all this catastrophic stuff going on where they dump 25,000 gallons, or 20, uh, 20, uh, 45,000, 45 gallon drums off San Francisco, 30 kilometers off, 30, nowhere, right smack out off San Francisco. And so it's all this radiation that uh, Britain, Sellafield, England, is 8 million liters a day hemorrhaging into the ocean. We don't know what the hell China got done. We don't know what Israel got done. We don't know what the Russians got done with their nuclear stuff. We don't know what India and Pakistan, as if they got, you know, there's a million children down there every year starved to death. So who knows what they done with their nuclear waste. It's a big joke where... You know, the Black Hawk helicopters and the soldiers are walking around with depleted uranium rounds. Soldiers came back from the war because they were sitting in those Abram tanks. They shoot out 10 pounds of solid uranium, 238. It's not tipped. It's not friggin' coated. They just went overboard beyond imagination with this, with this overload of radiation on the planet on purpose. It's 100% on purpose. And people are doing it you know that are empowering these monsters are doing it for a paycheck they're doing it for their pension they're keeping their mouth shut so they can be a teacher or a professor or so they can be a lobbyist or a politician so they they feel like they fit in somewhere with that five thousand dollar suit and those dirty underwear and so they have to chemtrail the skies or they're going to just have this explosion that's going to frighten the planet and screw up everything they're up to. They're up to making uh, isotopes with nuclear power and they just can't get what they want or they can't solve the equation they want to solve. So they're trying all of these insane, insidious routines and they can't control it anymore. It's out of control for quite a while. But Fukushima sends it all over the top. Because um, we can't get in to slow it down or try to slow it down and which means that ocean is going to destroy everything on the Pacific Rim, just like what happened to the Philippines. See, the Philippines is 7,000 islands in that archipelago uh, that are totally, completely, utterly annihilated. 
There's nothing left there. The topsoil is gone. The trees are gone. The telephone poles are gone. And the people there say they can't live there anymore because if they're going to have another storm like that, there's nothing to hide behind for them. They're going to get blown away. See, the next time uh, they got no shelter. Right now the shelter barely stood up, but it can't take another beating like that. That's an F4 tornado with a 100 mile wide eye. They can't have another one of them show up, so they got to come trail like crazy now because it's overload, see? Uh, but it's only going to get worse, much worse. And you can see the model in that picture below. That's uh, based upon around, I think it is 600 days dispersion by ear. Not counting the ocean. Not counting the numbers you've seen in that video last night. And, I mean, uh, Prince Philip, in his autobiography, The Queen's Husband, The Vampire uh, from Hell, He's 96 years old, I think, now. He's got in his autobiography that when he dies, if there's such a thing in reincarnation, when I come back as a virus and wipe out 95% of the human race. And that's not a joke. See, these people, are, this is not a joke at all. And the, the toxicity that I never even got to last night, that I just... It's just so much. I got 99 headlines just in this one little bundle that I wanted to try to get through and I, and I still haven't been able to get through it because I'm screaming. And I get so upset because um, I realize that if I tell people this stuff and I don't control it a little bit, that's why I had to give it up. But I can't hide the truth, see? I can't, that's not... Uh, that's what's missing, obviously, from the dialogue out there, is the emotion. When you see the talking heads in the media, uh, they have no emotions outside of, ha ha ha, and then some music snips in and slips out, and they change the subject, and that's the game. And it works very well, right, obviously. If you take a child, it works best on them and you're talking to them, they're watching TV, then uh, they, they can't hear you, they can't hear, they slip into this uh, thing that is set to resonate at the same uh, frequency as the brain on purpose to do that to them. And like I said, the old TVs were actually blasting out 20,000 volts of x-rays. Unbelievable, the old CRTVs, the big ones, the big ugly things that, you know, compared to the beautiful little tiny skinny stuff. Don't let that fool you. But when it comes to the voltage and the x-rays, there is a huge difference. You know, the screens are more, they're going to be used in the very near future for subliminal, hardcore subliminal messaging. So you'll be doing what you're doing, but you can't see it in the background, but subliminally, uh, 1 64th of a second flashes and you can't register that in your eye like I said you can't see in the ultraviolet stuff either right so we can only see and that's really important for people to remember that you can only see in one spectrum but there's many spectrums right there and you can buy glasses to see in some of those spectrums you can use certain instruments that are too expensive but if you go to university you can see in some of them spectrums and if you were able to see in certain spectrums you would see the chemtrails you wouldn't be able to see each other because of the chemtrailing, the way that it falls. It's designed to catch, and that's all it's designed to do. See, if you think about uh, geoengineering, what do they say? Well, it's uh, solar radiation. Geoengineering for solar radiation. Well, take out the word solar, and you got geoengineering for radiation. It's pretty straightforward. And because that's the subliminal messaging routine, it's about... It's about grammar too, by the way, but it's also about how do you imp uh, get people to do your job? Well, you make them think it's for saving the planet, and in one sense it is, but it's not for the reason that they think it is. It's because the, 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 pe the structure out there knows that if this was to snap out, they would lose all control, and they couldn't regain it, not with this many people on, on the planet, and they just can't control it. 
And so they want to control the die-off, and so they keep coming out with, there's going to be 2 billion uh, uh, Alzheimer's patients, right? So they scared the fuck out of you. Or um, everybody's going to have cancer in the next 10 years, like uh, the Red Cross said last year, or the year before, right? or two years ago. Just after Fukushima, the Red Cross had come out. But that's because uh, when you look back at uh, June 2011, just, you know, six weeks after, or uh, four, five weeks after, or not even five weeks after, Everybody along the coastline was ingesting 10 hot particles. But see, the study didn't come out now until recently about the buckyballs. And there's a link to that below of how they, because of the salt water and the sulfur, is able to carry it long distances. And that's why we've seen the increase now recently in the last two years. Remember, I made a video a couple of years, uh, two years back. We hadn't seen sunshine here for 174 days. And then the next year, last year, I had made another video where we hadn't seen sunshine, I think it was 125 days or something. Unbelievable. But that's because the radiation was already here and they were building buffer clouds to stop the ocean because the ocean is picking it up. Think about the ocean, it's not just 5,000 miles across, it's millions of square miles. And so the clouds that is forming, they build buffer zones for the clouds to come in and whack into. But then they have all the radiation around, say, San Francisco. They have all the, the radiation at Hanford that is hemishing out into the Columbia River and into the environment. There's 41 miles of open pit of yellow cake down there, the 238, that's contaminated with tonium and strontium and amarunium and uh, just really toxic chemicals from the EPA's uh, murderous rampage of releasing 65,000 unregistered or unregulated, with no environmental human impact studies, done up within, uh, chemicals done on them into the uh, industry in 1981 when it hung its shingle outside of a door. EPA had grandfathered in 65,000 chemicals. And so a lot of those chemicals, say, you know, probably half of them are extraordinarily carcinogenic. And they find their way into your tampons, into your toothpastes into your Pepsis. 2,200 of the chemicals that were grandfathered with no human uh, environmental impact studies done on them um, are foods. So you can make food out of that. That's how much they care about you. That's how much they love you. They grandfathered and everything and then said that. You can use a bunch of this stuff too by the way to feed them if you want to. And the EPA, the people that work there, just goes along with it for a job, for a pension, for a credit card, for an office for a suit, for a jacket, for the fuck of it. Because they just don't care. They got a job, they're bred for that job by their inbreed parents, right? The whole system is full of inbreeds. If you were to go into any court in Canada and the United States, there's hardly a fucker there who can afford a lawyer. I'm sorry, but there's hardly a person there who can afford a lawyer. So what does that tell you about your society? that you victim, victimize the most impoverished ones in your communities. No matter what community you go in there, there's not one person there can afford a lawyer. I can tell you. I've seen it. It's unbelievable that the whole system, and i got friends of mine that have been lawyers for many years, and it's just, you know, it was okay because they can ignore it. But it came to the point where they just can't ignore it anymore. Because you fill up their, their justice system, is fill up the most impoverished people on the planet for the most stupidest reasons on the planet, for the most innocent reasons, many, you know, for smoking pot. Can you imagine 50% of the prison population for smoking a fucking joint? I mean, that makes the police the stupidest fucking people on the planet, obviously. You can't get any stupider than that when you go out and you prosecute people for fucking drinking, getting drunk, or smoking pot, which is what they all done, all their friends done when they were growing up. But yet, they, 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 you know, if you watch the, the, mil, the milligram experiments, you realize that most of the population will fucking murder you. Will murder you. If they think they're under authority. But it's your authority that the system has evolved around. But it got manipulated, unfortunately, by the corporations. But the chemtrail part is so important because they've been doing this for a long time. They've been weapons testing for a long time. They blew up Japan in uh, 45, right? He got sick of the fire balloons that the Japan was sending over in the jet streams every three days. Because the jet streams at 100 miles an hour, 2,400 miles, 
in 24 hours. And so they need to build up buffer clouds to stop all the radiation that's hemorrhaging and dumped into the Pacific Ocean, into the Atlantic Ocean, into um, so many oceans, India, Russia, Pakistan, France, Britain, the twisted, demented, fucking demented, what a demented bunch of fucking scum. Scum! What they're fucking doing down there. Dirt bags, boy. Sellafield, 8 million liters a day. It's so toxic that they're going to shoot the seagulls if they fucking land. It's so toxic, the wind that goes over is contaminated. That's why Britain became the first true police state. Because everybody thought Britain was going to fucking snap. It was just going to snap when they found out about all that radiation in Sellafield. But they were so good at keeping them impoverished, so good at keeping them off balance and struggling, so good to keep, at keeping the happiness away from them by just having to land for 7% of the population. They're so good at marginalizing everybody and then just rewarding the inbreeds themselves, right? They're so good at that, that the population still hasn't woken up to what's going on, that they're surrounded by radiation, that all their land is radiated. That's why they're letting them do all the fracking. That's why all the fracking is going on in Canada now all of a sudden, 44,000 new fracking, because it don't fucking matter. And that's why all the fracking is going on there. Not only that it doesn't matter, because they think they got their way now. And they're just going for broke with the GMO, with the fracking. Uh, the chem trailing is just to stop having, having a mass die-off of a population. Because the they'll lose control. And so they're just barely hanging it together now, but it's getting more tyrannical each time. And they're, So that's why the NSA and Google and Facebook, uh, fucking scumbag, and Twitter included, are treating you like a hockey card. Right? Because they're terrified fried of what we're doing here tonight. Terrified of what we're doing here tonight. That this might happen. And this frightens these fuckers. But the people that are in charge, they're compartmentalized, right? They're trying to do a specific fucking job. And that's why the algorithms are so important, because the people that are trained to do the job to fuck us over are learning too. And they're having a hard time doing their job. But the algorithm, see, that doesn't have a conscience. That doesn't have... And, you know, at some point, we reach critical mass. We're getting close to that, whether you realize it or not. Uh, Berkeley, California, just decided it's going to tell its entire population about Fukushima and mitigation. And you don't take... That's not going to raise a few eyebrows. You should watch the meeting. It's packed. And as soon as that amendment is over, everybody friggin' leaves, cheering, clapping, because that's huge. That Berkeley, California is now going to set up their own counters to count the radiation and then warn their citizens if there's a... Because the ocean affects all of them. And they have to start somewhere. But that was about budget. That was about allocations. But that's also about the first city to kick that can back at the system. Right? Because what's going to happen? They're going to have to follow protocol if there's a radiation spike. And that's going to, there goes, right? So you can see all of a sudden, when you go and look for Fukushima, it's just really slow in 24 hours. All of a sudden, one of these days, you're going to see the, right? And that's what we're doing now is so important, is we have to train people of the other narrative. We have to have make sure there's a narrative out there, because they're going to scare and terrorize people to the end of time that there's another narrative that you get healthy, you get away from the GMO, that you got to get away from the Pacific Ocean, that you use the jet stream to get away from, you don't want to be underneath the jet stream, basically. You have to relocate. That's the real deal. You should be gone now. So should I. And I will be. Uh, everybody's going to have to get out of this jet stream area because of the fallout. It's still releasing down there. It'll never stop. But the Pacific Ocean picking up all these isotopes, the strontium, uranium, the plutoniums, and the family tree, and the millions, the millions, the millions of different concoctions that they probably got into this thing, 
I shouldn't say millions, but thousands, because there is a lot of chemicals goes on too, but I mean, I can't remember what the number was on actual different chemicals. We hear 65,000 on regulated chemicals, but you can mix these together to make other chemicals is what a lot of people don't realize. But they're supposed to be regulated, whoopee do. You got, it's too late for even that. And the GMO is a really huge player. If you look at, um, you know, Nagasaki, um, they had a, a, it was mostly women and kids, and there wasn't much food, and they had very low nutrition, and they were isolated in that sense. And so that's one of the reasons they actually dropped it there so they could study the long-term effect on these people. That was on purpose, 100%. They, were, they didn't have to do it, see? That's not how the system works. The background of the system works, how the elites are carrying out an agenda because they can't take it with them. Right? Rockefeller and Rothschild, Queen Elizabeth, Queen Beatrice, Prince Philip. These have been in control for a long time. They're very old now, and there's no way they can see their, their video playing inbreeds. I mean, they are inbreeds. That's what they are, that whole lineage, that blue blood, that's the uh, inbreeding. Um, and But what, what we got to do is take it back. We got to take it back. We, you know, the first step is we got to get rid of the corporation's human rights. We got to get rid of that illegal amendment, amendment to the slavery law that gave corporations the Fourth Amendment, the Fifth Amendment, and other amendments which allowed them to destroy a civilization as we know it. And there is no, we can't turn back from that unless we can take, unless we turn around and take away the unconstitutional rights. And Google commits crimes, they get a, a half a million dollar fine, half a billion dollar fine. But because they had human rights, they took all the tax money and put it in offshore accounts. So they don't care about paying those fines. It's, they're not going to get a fine themselves. It's the corporation. Nobody goes to jail. You can't put a corporate corporation in jail. You can't pin the blame on anybody in there because that's not how that structure works. When it used to be a charter, and a charter was if they broke any part of the charter, like pollution or doing trading workers bad, you can dissolve the corporation, cannibalize it, and sell it for restitution and to pay any outstanding debts. That's how a typical corporation is supposed to be set up. Lots of communities are actually set up that way. The Federal Reserve doesn't matter because it's a private corporation. It can go bankrupt. They can print money till the end of the time. Finally, it goes bankrupt. Big deal. They just start up another Federal Reserve, cross street, and start printing money again. See? That's how that works. It's a private corporation. It's in the Yellow Pages alongside the Federal Ex Express. And so, because they're a private corporation, you know, it used to be a charter, you can just dissolve them, but because they got human rights, you can't fucking touch them. And nobody wants to because that's the money machine. That's the money tree, right? And they're just going to pull the rug out and let it come down on your heads because they're psychopathic. That's the people that are hired for these jobs. They're 100% psychopathic. They don't even get an option for the job. They won't even try for the job. They just show up out of nowhere and they get the job because they're actual psychopaths. And the system is full of that. And I mean, it's really simple that we need to organize and immediately, and there is, um, I have to look it up, uh, I got it there, but there is a couple of senators in the states do have an amendment to the Constitution to take away the human rights of the corporations. And because of that, right, they manipulated the slavery laws and the increments over decades. And Justice Hugo Black wrote in 1939 that it was absurd that an amendment meant to protect black people from the, uh, a tyrannical government was being used by corporations to oppress the sovereign people. And nothing has changed since that. And because of that, like I say, corporations don't even pay taxes. Corporations can't be held accountable. How the fuck did we ever get to that stage? How come you can't be held accountable? How come your children are picked up and thrown down on their heads by the police? Because they can be held accountable. But the police can't. Because they're a corporation, see? You can't throw the police station in jail. You can't, you can't throw a police officer in jail because he's no different than an employee from Google. Yeah, you get outraged sometimes where they pacify you by um, giving time off of pay, but he's from a corporation. 
So the best thing you can do to protect yourself is become a corporation. And it takes money to play the human rights game, see? Psychopaths everywhere. But we, we can decapitate them immediately. What you do is you change, you, you take away their unconstitutional human rights and bring them back to their charters. And then the next time Google fucks up, they go to jail and you cannibalize Google to pay restitution. That's actually how it works. That's how it used to always work, and it had worked many times like that. In fact, you could pull the rug out from underneath them for just about anything. That's how you kept them. It was like, in one sense, I mean, these were small communities. You got to realize when these laws were in use. And so you weren't just going to screw over the small corporation, usually, because he, he paid taxes. They weren't even supposed to tax you. They're not even supposed to tax you now. They're not supposed to tax you, uh, they're only supposed to tax the corporations. That way, government didn't get too big. But the more money you give government, the bigger, more tyrannical and oppressive it becomes. And right now, they know. Like I've shown you many times in the last 50 odd days, that they knew, the government knew all about all the radiation, all about the 10 hot particles you were breathing every day. And they declined not to tell you that. Why they cannibalized your government from the inside is what you're doing right now. Our governments are cannibalizing the system and all its supplies for them for the future. That's exactly what it's doing. It's hoarding the iodines. And because there's so much radiation coming in, you need iodine. There's a lot of iodines out there in your foods, is what I'm talking about. And so you need to eat foods with iodine in it. Natural iodine. But you can't eat GMO, because GMO um, stops you from uptaking your nutrients. And you have to get out from underneath the jet streams, you have to get off the Pacific Rim, and within a thousand miles of the Pacific Rim, because of the super uh, typhoons, the super hurricanes that are coming from a contaminated Pacific Ocean, because the ocean is so full, the coastline is so full, that storms get much, much, much more powerful. And yes, there's radiation everywhere else, but being alongside the Pacific, uh, look where that just got the Philippines, uh, 7,000 islands in the archipelago have been leveled. There's nothing like that on the planet. That shouldn't exist on the planet. The biggest F4 tornado on the planet was maybe a quarter mile, half mile wide and traveled for about six miles. How the, how do we go from that for an F4 tornado to 100 miles wide that traveled for hundreds of miles at sustained winds of 195 miles an hour is because we have a radiated ocean of extraordinarily toxic radiation like the fuels that were used at the MOX fuel in Fukushima. And you have to think about it is that uh, Chernobyl was one third the size of Fukushima's smallest reactor. MOX fuel is a much bigger type of reactor. It's got nothing to do with making power. They've been making power for 50 years and they never needed all these isotopes. And these are weaponized military industrial mathematical equation, um, which is like the churn. Right, uh, you know, five thousand scientists and millions, billions, and billions of dollars to solve an equation about, and that equation was whether there's other, just a speculation of whether there was other, um, other parallels. If they can prove the equation, what people refer to as a God particle, what they were actually proving was an equation that says that there was parallel universes. Because that's how mass, that's, they don't care about life on Earth at all. They just want to get off the planet or parallel universes, whatever comes first. They have this, they, they will sacrifice everything on the planet just because they can't take it with them. But they'll sacrifice everything on the planet to go to another planet and do the same thing. To turn into the monsters you see in the alien movies. That's what they want to do with all these isotopes. That's what is about directed energy weapons. Um, and if you don't understand it, I mean, look up, um, look up directed energy weapons. It's just in every kind of uh, use right now. It's been around for 50 years anyway, a laser. But it's just the different modifications of the lasers with different types of isotopes. Because all the big lasers now, the military industrial lasers, are full of all of these exotic isotopes. And so they need these 
really exotic isotopes to make these really scary monstrous weapons that they won't tell you about that they'll never declassify and that they say it's for the aliens or for the asteroids eventually when they finally get exposed but it's just monsters in charge that are just will destroy this entire planet to get their own way so Yeah, tax. Well, we need a we need a planet revolt. They they're gone. All governments are now finished. That's the reality of it. As this comes out, all government is finished because they're and they know it because they're they're looting the system right now. They don't have in, any intentions of trying to maintain or store things for the population. They don't care about the population. No government out there cares about the population. Period. Not one of them. Every one of the employees are lazy fucking people, are scum, are the scum of the communities, and are stealing and molesting your loved ones. Stealing from them and molesting them at every chance they get. They're usually the most sickest, twisted, demented people imaginable. And they stabbed everybody in the back to get where they got. Every fucking one of them. They're the scum of the earth. They fill up our justice systems with the most impoverished people on the planet. These are the most degenerate, undeserving scum of the earth one could ever imagine. There has to be a few good souls among it, but uh, they get corrupted too at some point. You can't avoid it. When you're surrounded by shit, you smell, taste, feel, eat, and you think you are shit. And so you act that way. You can't help it. You have to be part of the good old boys club. The geoengineering, see, uh, the, they're talking about bouncing sunlight back into space that's got nothing to do with it if this goes viral we fought right they can't do their nuclear in um, isotope enrichments anymore publicly out in your communities anymore all that's gone and they just kicked me offline which is normal a little bounce I come over and say hi before we say goodbye, and that was a pretty good rattle. The reality of it is that the chemtrailing is about aggregating out particles to catch the radiation that is hemorrhaging all over this planet from just endless sources on this planet, from the endless uses on this planet, because we're ter terrified that if people understand what this is doing, like, there's no way to avoid it now, but that's what it was all about. And now they got to watch out for the superstorms, because if they have one of them, it's game over for them. Because people are waking up, people are paying attention, people are getting educated, and people want answers. People are not happy now, like myself in particular. I can understand that the trepidation ain't going to last much longer for many people. Many people are going to get upset. And they're going to have to. You can't take it back by walking in the street. You take it back by running in your streets. If that's what it takes. And I can assure you, that's what it's going to take. And it's going to happen. There's not even, you don't have to say, come on, let's go. Because at some point, the critical mass, and it's coming... And the chemical weapons attack, the false nuclear, false flags attacks ain't going to work no more. No one cares anymore about that shit anymore. Everybody, you know, we got 4,200 peer review academic studies produced every day, published every day, and then they're locked away in the ivory towers. Uh, uh, El Elsevier, Springer, and Wiley own 22,000 of the most prestigious academic journals on the planet. And they get the copyrights to all that, to the 1.6 billion man hours a year. Think of an academic journal as a thousand page book. Can you read 4,200 books, thousand page books in a day? Of course not. It's three in a minute. But it's locked away, see? So knowledge is here. We have so much knowledge, it's inconceivable that we could actually eke out a decent living on this planet. And we can reverse a lot of it. We can go out and collect all the known dumps in the ocean. We can deal with Hanford. The 450 billion gallons of yellow cake dumped right into the soil. Unbelievable. And then there's 41 miles of trenches down there. The Iraq. I mean, they got to dig up six inches of topsoil everywhere on the planet. 
that's what we'll do. Because if not the option, there's not there's, there's no other option. Ultimately, we're not even going to get off the planet. We don't want them off the planet. We don't want them to ever get off the planet. If they're getting away with this, our legacy is they don't get off this planet, period. Hi, Ivan. Just passing through. Albert. Sylvia. Hi, Nuts for Art. Yeah, let them eat the yellow cake. Hi, Mickey. You bet. Uh, Starlight. Jan Brooks. Yeah, I thought I got kicked off, Jan. Hi, Bob. Yeah, things have changed, you know. How you all say? The ninth wave. Yeah, let them eat, eat the yellow cake. Tom. Jimmy. Joe Smith. Missing Sky. Baby Mama. I'm not sure if she's here, but I'll say hi because she always shows up. Miss, uh, Miss Milky the Clown. Uh, she done a better job in my video last night. Uh, Fukushima by the numbers. It's a much uh, better audio. So if you're having problems with uh, my video, that's a good one to go watch. Catch her. Hi, Kay. And so my audio was spot on tonight, right? Hi, Mickey. Um, yeah, no, we'll slow it down, wind down, folks. I see hi to a few people. Hi, Sun Wolfer. You got, got the audio sorted? Yeah, good stuff. Hi, Make is looking. Yeah, you bet. This is important, you know, that, because a lot of people are awake to the chemtrails, and they just don't know what's going on, they don't understand it. And they don't even know, a lot of people don't even can prove that it's real or not. Yet, you know, we all know how real it is and how often it's been used. Like in Vietnam, like how they came trailed it and made it rain over the Ho Chi Minh Trail for an extra six weeks, extended uh, the monsoons. How chemtrails have been used for many years for farming and just for firefighting. That's chemtrails, 100%. And... Uh, you can go right now and you see how Russia got $20 million for chem trailing, chem seeding, cloud seeding, for just one day in case of a storm, to break up a storm from hitting their uh, capital, $20 million. And uh, uh, 130 ski resorts in the United States use cloud seeding with planes to make clouds for their ski resort. Um, the, the Beijing Olympics was... Uh, three days or four days of sunny skies because of cloud seeding, doing it broke up the clouds. And there's so many examples, uh, but there's so many companies out there. There's actually uh, weather mitigation companies, weather insurance companies, so your crops, uh, you can get a cloud seeding company, go out and break up the, or create rain over your field so you can get water. Not a joke, that's true. Cloud seeding is actually a very old thing now. Uh, Britain's Royal Air Force actually made killed, uh, what was it, 36 people in the UK back in uh, 1952. They made it there uh, in 2001. Just so many examples, just endless. Uh, cloud seeding is, is, you know, uh, used now to build buffers to stop the, the death plumes on, in the, being picked up in the Pacific Ocean from coming in and, and filling up a city. And if they can't do that, then they'll actually come in with a fog again. And we've seen the fog again, where they create fog. And uh, every country out there, its mitigation law on the Pacific Rim right now is to get up and cloud seed so they don't have a mass die-off because that will blow the lid off the nuclear industry. And the nuclear industry wants to stay alive. It's like a real live, it's like a real animal where it wants to live. It's the last one on the planet, and it, it wants to live at all costs. And it will destroy the entire planet to stay alive. It really, truly will. The nuclear industry will, will kill all life on Earth just to keep itself fucking alive so it can come up with another isotope. It's addicted to isotopes. Yeah, and I dominate. Thanks. Um, so both of these tonight are clicking at the exact same time, and in 50 nights I've never seen that. Both of them where the comment sections are exactly 
So maybe they're going to leave us alone. Who knows for a day. How you are, Prop? How's it going, bud? You bet. It's weekend. That's right, too. Some of us don't have weekends, but I might try this weekend. I'll be back tomorrow night, though. Albert, Sylvia, the illusion is over. There's living intelligent organisms in chemtrails? Yeah. Nanobots? Whatever. What do you mean, whatever? you got to realize exactly what chemtrails are. And always have been. Was about mitigating the radiation. It's a necessity. They have to do that. Because there's so much radiation released into the environment. If you watch all the video, uh, you'll get an understanding of what I'm talking about. Hi, Jan. Yeah, we'll see you later. Zip free. Uh, Sylvia, junkyard flyer, Bob. Daisy, hi. And I said hi to your propaganda because we. And we know hippies out there. Blast the hippies out there somewhere. Hey, hippie. Gotta wave with that hand. Jimmy! And that's it, I guess, for me tonight. And I wanted to come out with a video like that anyway, as we call it a night, because I realized the misinformation that's going on, and we can use the reality of what they're doing to force uh, this out there. And to change society for the better, to get 4,200 peer review academic journals flipped over a short while to start working on solutions and dealing with it. Because if you think of it as a meteorite coming at you, you know, who they all be rushing up to the mic and say, folks, there's a meteorite coming that's going to take out the planet. Right? But because it's radiation, everybody's sitting there with their thumb up their ass and one in their mouth saying... I wish somebody else would come out and say it first, so I can come out and say it behind them and not lose my job. But if it was a meteorite in the sky, they wouldn't have to worry about losing their job because everybody would say, well, he was right. See? So we need to make sure that the people that are speaking out get the support. And with 1,500 comments a couple of nights ago, man, you guys are unbelievably cool. That was so much fun. And um, we'll see you tomorrow night. Check. The fuck?